Ready? Ready. One, two, three. Grab one arm. I want that arm. Some I are blind. Others are ridden with cancer. Many have serious mental illness. All of them are old. And a few will never get out alive. The United States gives out longer sentences than any other place on the face of the earth. Europe, Europe looks, looks at us like we don't know what we're doing. It looks like, like we're crazy. Open now. In this special investigation, Fault Lines gains unprecedented and exclusive access to prisons across the United States and discovers a booming population of elderly inmates. Open fire. We ask, what's the true cost of America's lock them up and throw away the key approach to justice? The geriatric unit at the Joseph Harp Correctional Center in Lexington, Oklahoma, holds more than 250 elderly and disabled offenders. There you go. It was created three years ago in response to a massive explosion in Oklahoma's elderly prison population. There you go. Thank you. Our fastest growing segment is the inmates that are the age of 50 and over. Uh, we have about 3,700 now. That's grown almost 200% uh, in the last uh, decade. And projections are we're going to continue to grow at about 45% a year. When is not just? When not just? Uh, because of uh, enhancements to punishments, uh, tough on crime, 85% laws that require you to serve 85% before you're even eligible for parole. And, and then the advent of life without parole. My name is Plutarco Hill, and uh, my number is uh, 48713. I received that January the 16th, 1948. Plutarco has the oldest inmate number in the state. He's 86 years old. 66 of those years have been spent behind bars. He's escaped from prison 10 times. So you're as good at getting out of prison as you are getting in? Well, whenever uh, my health was good. Got over, I can't think of the name of the little town where that U-Haul trailer was at. What are you serving for now, this sentence? Uh, this sentence is a murder charge. How long ago? 1947. What's your sentence? Alive. Which one are you? Uh, I'm up there, I'll come around. And this is what life means for Plutarco now. A small section of a dormitory with a few black and white photographs of his family. He's outlived all of them. Elderly people in prison, uh, so they'd be given extra consideration for release? Well, yeah, yeah, I do. Can you explain why? 
because they're harmless. Plutarco's not alone. In fact, he's part of a growing American trend. In the last decade, the number of prisoners aged 55 and over has grown by an astonishing 75%, partly because longer sentences began to be handed out in the 1970s and 80s as the U.S. took a tough-on-crime approach. And the older a prisoner is, the bigger financial drain they pose. An elderly inmate costs around $70,000 a year to lock up two to three times more than younger offenders. Older prisoners suffer higher rates of health problems, functional disabilities, impaired movement, major diseases, and mental illness. My world wears white in a day of black sleet. It hides bitter cold with its pale purple feet grinning, rotted teeth, wanting more, more, more. Mabel Bassett Correctional Center is Oklahoma's largest women's prison. This state incarcerates more women per capita than any other in the U.S., twice the national average. And they too are growing old behind bars. We kill the world with hate and neglect. Estella and Mary may look like two grandmothers now. passing their time reading and writing poetry, yes, and they are, but they're also convicted black. killers. Smile with your broken teeth, morning in the morning, to nothing but debt, you bet we'll reap, and it won't be wedding white. I didn't have a choice of what I did. It was either kill or be killed. And I chose to live, that it was a survival thing. Estella turned 60 in November. She's been behind bars for 13 years and hopes to be released in 2014. Can you tell us what kind of impact you think your incarceration has, ha has had on your family? Well, it's been especially hard on my grandchildren because they always wondering why come I can't go home with them when they come to visit me. And, uh, and they get upset, like, why did you do it? They ask me, why did you do this, you know? And explaining to little kids like that, that you took somebody's life is really hard. The rising number of elderly prisoners and the price tag for that trend comes as state budgets are being squeezed across the country. Oklahoma has been hit particularly hard. The second round of uh, budget reductions uh, took a, a lot of our treatment. We have no substance abuse treatment uh, contractually or otherwise at medium security now. And I know you've been to some of our medium security facilities. So we have to go back to our 10,000 plus volunteers, uh, people that are retired professionals, uh, people that work with faith-based groups, our prison ministries, and ask them to do more to fill in the gaps. On a recent Sunday evening, the Westmore Community Church Band is doing just that, playing a concert for the inmates at Joseph Harp Correctional Center. Numerous prisons we visited in Oklahoma were on lockdown because they didn't have enough officers on duty to provide security. Staffing in the Oklahoma prison system is at 75%. Officials told us they were operating in warehouse mode storing people with little to no rehabilitation efforts. Most of the prisoners, young and old, that we talked to spoke about how hard it was to be granted parole. Unlike every other state in the U.S., all parolees in Oklahoma must be signed off directly by the governor. It's part of the political landscape where politicians don't want to be seen as soft on crime. You'll never find somebody running for elected office uh, in the House or Senate that's going to have a platform of successful reintegration or is going to be less tough on crime than whoever they're running against. Uh, that's just the nature of politics, I believe. What, what do you think of prison? It ain't no good. No, it ain't no good for people that ain't. At 100 years old, with one leg missing and suffering from dementia, Sherman Parker is one of the oldest prisoners in the United States. He's locked up at Dick Connor Correctional Center, an hour north of Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Miss Sparky, you ready to eat? Yeah. Here, the prison has found a low-cost solution for inmate health care. They train other prisoners as orderlies to work in the infirmary. Watch your head right there. Seth Anderson often works long hours taking care of inmates here, and for his efforts, he's paid $5 a month. He was convicted of kidnapping, drug possession, and possession of a sawed-off shotgun. Easy with the old man, huh? Dave Connors Infirmary is where everybody comes to die. You know, the guys with cancer. We have guys with cancer, leukemia, uh, bone cancer. One guy's got leukemia, bone cancer, and lung cancer, all the same. That's what he's here for. He's here to die. One inmate, Seth, takes care of his blind. A wool cap pulled down over his face to prevent light from irritating his eyes. He's one of several prisoners here that have been granted medical parole, but remain behind bars simply because they don't have anyone to pick them up. As for the fear that some of these men might reoffend, the numbers show that it happens, but it's rare. Only three out of every 100 prisoners over 55 return to prison, compared to almost half of all 18 to 29 year olds. They can't, they can't harm nobody else. They can't harm themselves, you know what I mean? There's no sense in them being in here. Corn dogs and soup, that sound good? Seth thinks Sherman Parker should be released too. Sherman is serving two life sentences for shooting and killing two women when he was 82. He has no chance of leaving prison alive. But what about, let's say the victim's family, like the, one of the ladies that Mr. Parker shot, their kids don't want him out. They think he should serve the rest of his life. I mean, do you understand that point of view too, or do you sure think he should be let out? Sure I do, but he's 100, almost 101 years old. You know what I mean? I think he has served a life. You know, I mean, he's a century old. You know, he served his life. Let him go. Yeah, let him go. Do you think you need to be in here? No, I don't need to be here. I need to be at home on the farm. That's where I was born and raised, that's all I know. Fishkill Correctional Facility. 70 miles north of New York City. To address the needs of its growing elderly prison population, New York built the nation's first unit for the cognitively impaired. All these inmates have dementia. Their average age is 63, and many suffer from Alzheimer's. We've joined the founder and director of the unit, Dr. Edward Sotili, as he does his rounds. Fault Lines is the first television crew to ever be allowed here. Mr. Turner, hey. how are you? All right. How are you feeling today? How are you? Today, Dr. Sotili checks on 59-year-old Chris Turner. Serving a sentence for kidnapping and sodomy, he's also being punished for punching a nurse in the stomach. How are you doing with your arm motions, though? Seems to be a little better now, man. Uh, he came to us uh, a couple of years ago uh, with Huntington's chorea. That is a uh, genetic disease uh, that is gradually progressive, and the patient has these movements that are purposeless. He, he can't control his, his, his movement. And eventually what happens, it affects his ability to swallow, and eventually they deteriorate, they lose weight, and they die. This unit houses 30 beds and it's almost always full. Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you, sir. How are you doing today? In the outside world, inmate Robert Johnson was a heavy gambler. Donald Trump's moving all over the world, Hong Kong and all over. Yes, be kidding. Oh, yeah, I'm not kidding you. In his private jet. Until his wife canceled his credit line at the casinos. Because I promised her before I left the house I would not use my credit line. I promised, I kept my word. Mm -hmm. But she did tell me I couldn't say I had a credit line. Okay. Now he claims he doesn't remember shooting at her with a rifle. Which raises the question, if prisoners with dementia can't remember the crimes they committed, how can they be rehabilitated? I had the same question. I can't control that. But not being able to control that, the best that we can do 
as physicians and, and uh, healthcare providers is <clears throat> to manage them in a way that is humane, that's uh, compassionate, and the only way we can do that is by understanding their disease. As the prison population in America continues to age, other states will undoubtedly need units like this one to look after inmates with deteriorating mental capacity. But at $100,000 a year per inmate, where's the money gonna come from? At present, no one seems to have the answer. Three years ago, Larry White was released from prison. He served a 32-year sentence for armed robbery and felony homicide. He's 72 now. And after so long inside, he struggled to adapt to life on the outside. I would get on the subway, and I would be self-conscious. I would break out in a cold sweat, because it seemed to me that everybody knew that this guy had just come out of prison, that everybody was staring at me. You know, and I said, well, what the f are you looking at? You know, what the f is the matter? You know, you got something on you, you know? And you can't, <laughs> you can't do that. This is all you know. This is all you know. This While locked up, Larry built social networks and programs for prisoners, trying to change the system from within. And you're producing a product that's dysfunctional. That's right. Uh -huh. So what is the purpose of this? It's all back to the same thing, social control. Right. So I organized other prisoners. First of all, to change the conditions and to, uh, to oppose how the guards and administration was treating us. You know? And so that, that became a movement and it spread from one prison to another. Now Larry is trying to continue the same work from the other side of the fence, advocating for compassionate release for older inmates. I'm a firm believer that everybody can change. Now, it may take some people longer than others to change. Some people will die before they do change. It's just a matter that they didn't live long enough to change. But my whole life now is geared to going back and helping those I left behind. That's my life. I would feel that lost if I couldn't go back at all. It's in you to a point that, that even though you're out, it's yeah. still in you. Yeah, I miss it. I do. No, I don't tell people that, <laughs> but I do. Unlike Larry, many prisoners won't make it out alive. Thousands of inmates will die behind bars in the United States this year. Lewis Young is afraid that he may be one of them. Diagnosed with kidney cancer, Lewis awaits his sentence in the hospital wing of Philadelphia's detention center. To have cancer, to be in jail, you know, and not to be around your family, you know, it's like, it's real scary. In Lua family, Lewis has Phyllis Taylor. She's a correctional chaplain and has developed a hospice program here to help comfort the dying prisoners. Are you set to be a teacher? <laughs> My hope is that if it's not possible to release the elders and to release the dying into general society, that the prisons and jails become home-like. I thank you, Lord God, for bringing Miss Teller into my life, Lord God. You know, she, I mean, she popped out of the clear blue. She's like an angel to me, right? And I started getting my proper medication. You know, they started giving me um, morphine. Phyllis works with dozens of other dying patients across the state of Pennsylvania. She believes everyone should be allowed to die with dignity. A lot of people would say, look, they, they broke the law, they deserve to be there, and if they die there, then that's the choices they made. And I would say back, each person has value, and there is something redemptive in each person, that nobody's a throwaway person. This is my community. I'm always going to be behind bars. I'm always going to be there. How can I help at least one other person so my life has meaning? Well, they call us OGs. OGs, ori original gangsters. <laughs> at 59, Kevin Bartley is a member of the Lifers Group at Otisville Correctional Facility in New York. 
He's serving 15 years to life for his role in a murder during a convenience store robbery. We did have a Republican uh, governor that ran on crime and punishment. And he, when he came in, he said he didn't want no one with a violent crime to be released. And that was a message he sent throughout the parole uh, of department. And they took that very serious. Kevin has earned privileges at the prison. He works freely in a storehouse, bringing in goods from the outside world. Two apples. He's been told that he's a perfect candidate for release, but he's been denied parole every time he's gone before the board. Instead, he keeps getting deuced. Two years or deuce is the max they can hold you. I've been deuced eight times. So I'm part of the 16 year over the minimum clause. When's your next one? My next one is in November of 2011. Second of your year? That's gonna be my year. That's gonna be my year. 31 years in the penitentiary and I will leave. Kevin has used his time inside to better himself. He's received a master's degree in theology and has learned sign language while working with deaf inmates. Keeping people incarcerated who are community ready, ready to go out there and be an asset to the community. To me, it's crazy. Why don't you release us now while we're still healthy and be able to contribute? You know, don't wait till, you know, we lose an arm or a leg, you know, or our minds. So while a crisis that few seem willing to face expands to alarming proportions, Kevin and thousands of other older inmates like him will continue to grow old behind bars. When you have more people locked up per capita than anybody else in the civilized world, how can you do that? And you're always crying how much money it costs. It's not solving your problems. We have to treat these people as human beings. They are human beings. And they deserve compassion, dignity, and respect. And if you, if you treat these people with that, then I think you're doing the right thing. And I think that's the reason why we're here. You know, you're in a place with loneliness. Loneliness will kill you. You know, although I'm in an institution now with 500 other guys, I'm still lonely. You know, you're still lonely. You're lonely inside. You know? How many times have you escaped prison? Ten. Why do you keep coming back? Because the law chases me down. Now that's a stupid question, man. <laughs> Get real if we're going to talk.